Ang buntag sa tanan. All right, how many people are excited to worship the Lord today? All right, such an amazing response from everyone. Pwede mong bati ang katabi ninyo, tell that person good morning. It's such a beautiful Sunday morning. I woke up today really, really excited just to preach the Word of God. And of course, we're starting a brand new series entitled Designed for Relationships. Tell the person beside you, I'm designed for you. Ah. <laughs> well, anyway, um, just before this, I just want to give some... Um, some announcements here. This coming Thursday, we will be having our worship and prayer night, so we'd love to invite you. Let's worship the Lord together. It's really a time for us to just really enjoy singing together, worshiping the Lord, but more importantly, for us to come together in prayer. And there are so many things that we are to pray for, and at the same time, as His people, as His church, we are called to Pray. And I'm really excited for this week's um, worship night, especially as we're at, um, entering into a new month. Kalaan yung March na, ang bilis ng panahon. Okay, and the next thing, the next thing you know, magtatanggap na tayo ng Christmas bonus natin. So time flies fast, but I pray that we, we would just continually pursue the things of God in our lives. So we hope to see you this Thursday, 7 p.m. here in our uh, assembly hall. This is a time where our location in Mintal and Turil will come together and worship the Lord. At the same time, um, this coming March, we are actually doing a Next Generation campaign. That's why we are having this campaign, Think Generations. In short, one of the best things that we can do in life is to invest in the future generations. Yeah, for, for the parents here, I know that you're already thinking of how you can secure your, your children and your children's children. And that's what we are passionate about as a church as well. That's why we are coming up with a campaign entitled Think Generations because that's what we would love to do. In fact, we would want to give you opportunities for you to serve with us, to disciple the next generation with us. That's why we would want to invite you to sign up to become a campus volunteer. What it means is that we would want each and every one of you to participate in the work that we're doing in the campuses. There are some of you, you have the heart really to, to disciple a student or maybe to cook for a student. And we're, we will open our homes to certain students as well. That's why we'd love to invite you. Do join us and sign up to become a campus volunteer. Tell the person beside you, ikaw yun. All right? So please, we'd like to invite you, do sign up, and probably you're asking, how do we sign up? Later at the back, dun po sa discipleship uh, corner natin, you can go there, sign up, you can scan the QR code in the table, you can just be there, and you, if you have more questions, you can approach me, any of the staff, or our campus missionaries. Kung may nakita po kayo t-shirt na Think Generations, then you can approach that person. But please, we would want to invite you to join us as we do God's mission together. And one last announcement is that today is the last day of our Sundays. For the students, okay, may lechon po. Meron ba? Wala, 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 okay. Grab <laughs> selling point, let's show no. But if you're a student, um, we'd love to invite you. Uh, today is the last day of our Sunday. Uh, we're talking about love playlist. So after the service, it's a really a time of fellowship and learning together about the God's purposes for your lives. And so after the service, you can just go to our training room and you would, uh, re so you would see other awesome people, awesome students there. All right? John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? 
But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for showing us what it means to do life in a community. Thank you, Lord, because you are our relational God who initiated um, this relationship for us to experience you, Lord, for us to be in a relationship with you, for us, Lord, to really grow in this relationship with you. So, Lord, thank you for your grace and thank you for your love. I pray that even today as we would be worshiping you through the preaching of your word, we pray that you would refresh every single one of us. And Holy Spirit, we pray that you would just fill our hearts with joy, that you would give us understanding and wisdom today. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would be glorified in our time together. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please, please be seated, everyone. Now, I want to show you a photo here of a good friend of mine. Grabe, no? Good friend talaga. So this is JFK one of the presidents of the United States of America. And you could see in this photo that his son was, is playing inside his office, in the Oval Office. Now, looking at this, you could just see that despite of JFK being the most powerful man in the world that time, despite of his busyness, you could see here that his son can freely just go to him and enjoy in his presence. What's the point here? The point here is that no matter how rich you are, you can probably buy a plane ticket to go to the U.S. or probably visit the White House, but we can never enjoy the access that a child has to her father. Many times when we think of what's important in the world, we always think about money. We think about being successful, and if you have the money, if you, have, if you are successful, then we get to do the, the important things in the world. No, don't get me wrong. Money is not wrong. In fact, God wants us to have money, or God wants to bless us so that we can be a blessing to others, but that's not the point of life. You see, what God wants us to understand today is that if there is something that is of great value, of great importance, or probably the most important currency that one person could ever invest in, it's not money, but it boils down to one word, relationships. Because we can have all the money in the world, yet we cannot enter into this kind of relational enjoyment. But the son of this very busy, powerful person can easily access and enjoy. Like, Dad, can I spend time with you while you're there having a meeting? Can I just play around? That's how powerful relationships are. And in the same way, if you have all the money in the world, you can buy and build a nice home or a nice house, but you get to enjoy a home, and it depends on the depth of the relationships that you have. Because you can have a nice house and yet people inside that house do not love one another. In the same way, you get to enjoy church not because the place is nice, but because of the people that you journey with. Hello? Some people that I've known here, probably you've been a regular church attendee for the past five years and still right now, wala kang friends. You're like pastor introvert kasi ako, appear pareha tayo. Joke po yun, hindi po ako introvert. But for you to be able to, to, to enjoy this, to, for you to be able to grow in, 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 in your relationship with God, it is essential that we journey alongside other people. Not only that, did you know that most people who resign from their work, it's because there's an unhealthy relational culture inside their office. In short, people would want to enjoy their working relationships. That's how important relationship is. Not only that, you get to enjoy the presence of God and be in heaven, not by doing good works, 
not by being religious, but by having a relationship with God. That's why it's very important for us to understand that it is by relationship, it is by put, putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we get to enjoy God. So you see, it is very important for us to understand that relationships are important. Relationships matter. Not only are you born into a family, we are designed to be in a community. We are designed for relationships. But the question I want to ask today is this. Do you value the relationships that you have in your church community? Do you value the people who are supposed to help you grow in a relationship with God? Not only that, do you pursue a God-glorifying, Christ-centered, life-giving relationship? Because we can be the most successful person in the world. We can, all, we can have all the, the, the travel or we can have all the money in the world. But unless we are growing alongside the people that God has placed in our lives, then we're missing the point. You see, we are designed for relationships. Even God Himself is in a community. And the, and the foundational reason or truth why we need to pursue this God-glorifying, life-giving relationships is because God Himself has exemplified that. And I want to say this to everyone, that our relational God created and designed us to be in God-glorifying, life-giving relationships. It is innate in us. It is natural. We are created for us to enjoy these relationships. That's why for those who have been married, you are not married for you to have a, a housemate. You are, to enjoy in, in, you are to enjoy this intimate, loving relationship. You did not marry someone so that may, pang, may tagahugas na yung kinainan. Nag-asawa ka hindi dahil para may magplansya na yung mga damit. But you are to serve one another. You are to enjoy each other's relationship. Who among you here, in your home, you always enjoy each other's presence. That if you're a child, every time you see your parents, you get delighted. And you're like, Mama, Papa, I'm excited to, to create memories with you. Or how about parents that every time you see your children, you're, not only are you motivated, but you're eager to just spend time with them and display and demonstrate your love for them. You see, we are designed for relationships. I have never met a man na biglang nahulog lang sa langit at nabuhay sa mundo. Meron ba sa inyo dito? Biglang nahulog lang kayo sa langit? Of course, we use the term, hulog ka ng langit. Siguro, no, kung hulog tayo ng, 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 ng langit, siguro flat yung ilong natin. Like, <laughs> But the point here is that we were all born in a family, and at the same time, God places us in a church community, and in essence, we are to grow alongside these people. You see, the church is not man's idea. It's God who established the church. It's God who adds you into a church. And if you consider Victory Davao as your home church, I plead with you, and I charge you today, grow alongside this church community. Tell the person beside you, I appreciate your faith. But before you do that, can you, pwede yung pakilala mo na kayo sa, sa katabi ninyo? Introduce your name to the person beside you. So in the passage that we've read, we see the story where J Jesus was baptized. And the one who baptized him was his cousin John, John the Baptist. And John, his calling was to prepare the way for the kingdom of God so people would be ready and would, would, and would prepare for the coming of, of God's kingdom. And so when Jesus went to John and he asked, I will have to be baptized, sabi pa ni John, no, 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 dapat ako yung baptize mo. Now, most of everyone who got baptized there, they responded because John called for repentance. You see, Jesus did not get baptized because of repentance, but as verse 15 says, to fulfill all righteousness. And so, 
Jesus got baptized, and this is where our, our, our story continues. Verse 16, And when Jesus was baptized, immediately He went up from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to Him, and He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on Him. Siguro, just before I continue, just want to say this. There are some of you, you're still thinking, Pastor, I ako magpa-baptize because iko-convert ako niyan. You see, the reason why we get water baptized because it is our obedience to God. It is to fulfill all righteousness. In fact, Jesus himself was baptized. That's why we have to understand that being water baptized, it's not about being part of a religious institution, but it is basically our identification that we are now in Christ, that we now belong to the Lord. So, so I don't ever think that you get water baptized because mako convert ka. In fact, conversion is what the Holy Spirit does. And we all need to be converted because we used to be in sin, but now in Christ, we are now identified in Him. And so what we have to understand is that it's the work of the Holy Spirit who wherein we are being transformed and being converted into becoming a child of God. Does that make sense? So for some of you that you're still thinking, should I be baptized? Yes, you need to. It's not because you are to be converted, but it's because it is your obedience to the Lord. Can you hear an amen? Amen. amen. So it says here that as Jesus was baptized, there immediately there opened, the heavens opened, and the Spirit of God came in the form of a dove. And at the same time, it says here, Verse 17, and behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. So we see in the story here, we're in, in this occasion, the Holy Trinity was revealed all together. The Spirit of God, Jesus, and at the same time, God the Father. So it was the Father who basically spoke that this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. At the same time, the Holy Spirit came and at the same time affirmed the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus being the Son, He was basically saying that I am ready to serve the purposes of my Father. And many times in, in, in the Gospels, Jesus would, would, would say that I am sent by my Father. I am sent by my Father. And every time people and the Pharisees would ask Him, Who sent you? What would Jesus say? I am sent by my Father. But in this very passage that we have read, here's what we could learn. That the Trinity exemplified a community of love and unity. That they displayed, demonstrated, displayed what it means to be in this kind of love relationship. What it means to be in a community wherein we are to display love and unity. Believer, because for us to continue in our walk in the Lord, for us to continue in our faith community, we have to understand that the foundational truth or the foundational reason is that our God is also in the community. That the God that we serve, that the God that we worship is a relational God. In fact, if you look at the Bible in, in our Christian faith, one of the most important Christian doctrines or teaching is on the teaching of the Holy Trinity. And what we could learn here is that the Trinity is in perfect unity. Everyone say unity. Now, many of us here, maybe one of the, your struggles is that you've been part of church, but at the same time, you've been, you've experienced what it what we call this, this, you've experienced this unity in the church. And so I just want to say this. There are things in church that we, that we call essential things, and there are also non-essential things. When we talk about essentials, we believe in the Holy Trinity. We believe that salvation is by grace through faith. So these are essential teachings that we need to embrace. Now, there are also non-essential things. Like for example, I'm wearing a shirt today which I don't normally do on a Sunday, but we have to understand that there are essential things that the Bible is clear about 
but also non-essential things. The problem sometimes is that when we make non-essentials become most essential. And normally, these are petty things that has caused divisions in the church. But if there really is a model, an example that we have to, to embrace and look at, is that the Trinity is in perfect unity. They're co-equal and they are of the same value. The doctrine of the Trinity means that there is one God who eternally exists as three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? These definitions express three crucial truths. The Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit are distinct persons and each person is fully God and essentially they are one God. And I want to show you a picture here to illustrate. It says here, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and three distinct persons, but they are one. But listen to me. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father. That's why, as Christians, the way we relate with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're different. There was a teleseria before. Can you remember For so many people, they would have a hard time understanding that. But it is by faith that we believe in this teaching. That it is by faith that we understand as well. And the Holy Spirit will give us the clarity and understanding how this actually came to be. But we have to understand that the, Holy, that, 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 that the Trinity, they're essentially one God in three distinct persons. And as believers, we have to understand that they are in full cooperation. They're not in competition. Hindi po sila nagpapagalingan. Sabi ni Jesus, look at me, I'll be crucified on the cross. Mas magaling ako. No, 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 no. Each has a specific role to fulfill. Now, this unity that the Trinity has displayed is expected to be demonstrated by us, His people. Unity. And one of the most important marks of his church is actually unity. Now, let's pause for a moment here and think about the people in your row. Think about mga taong seatmates mo. Now, think with me. Can you actually imagine yourself inviting that person in your home and share a meal with them? Where? Invite nyo nga. Ayaw sa inyo, parang, eh, doon lang sa kabila, huwag sa akin. <laughs> Do you know that we are to build? We are to be in unity. Remember in Acts, when Peter preached and 3,000 were added to their number that day, there was belongingness. There was a sign, a sign trust knowing that you have Christ in your life and I have Christ. Let's share this devo our devotion in Christ and let's grow together. And true enough, they did life together and it brought so much value in their faith. And one of the things that I really enjoy being part of this church community is that I don't have to wait for the other person to be matured and to be perfect before that before I can actually build with a person. Hello. 2015, I moved to Victory Davao from Victory Jensen. And though I was though I am a very extroverted person, I love being with people. And alam mo kahit gabi na alas gis alas onsen ng gabi, I'm still at my 95% ng social battery. I love being with people. And the moment that I moved here, I started building with people. I was very intentional. I, I was just excited to build with the church community, even if I do not know them. When I first met Roel, 
I remember him here. Dan taga siya nakaupo. And when I saw him, I was like, I approached him and I was like, Hi, what's your name? Sabi niya, Power. A joke lang. Sabi niya, I'm Rowell. And then nag-usap kami. And as we were talking, I was like, Bro, let's have coffee. It's not because I've met him in, 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 in our past life, but I just know that as I saw him worship the Lord, I know that I could build with this person. And right now, he's now part of our church staff. You see, as believers, we don't get to choose based on our preferences or our personalities but knowing that this person has Christ in his life, we are to build with them. In fact, it, this was the prayer of Jesus. In John chapter 17, it says here, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. Who among you here, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Come on, show your hands. Who among you, you believe in Jesus? Great. Now, this is what Jesus prayed. Verse 21, I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. So Jesus understood that probably one of the most critical things that would ever happen to the believers or to His church is to be disunited. That's why He prayed this prayer. Lord, I pray that the church, that the believers will be one. As the Father and Jesus are one, we are to be one. So we display who God is. With other believers. Not only are, is the Trinity in perfect unity, but the Trinity has distinct roles, but unified in mission. So we talk about they're in full cooperation and that they're in perfect unity, but at the same time, they have distinct roles. While the members of the Trinity are co-equal and co-eternal, they have different roles or functions within the Godhead. Now, the general teaching that we always hear in church is that the Father is the head of the deity, that Jesus is the one who reveals this deity, now while the Holy Spirit carries out the work of the deity. So the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they are one, but they have distinct roles, but at the same time, they are unified in mission. But I want us to understand this, that God does not exist for a mission. In fact, God exists for His glory. That's why He created man to worship Him, to glorify Him. That's why everything we do, it is to glorify our Father. It's to glorify Jesus the Son. It's to glorify the Holy Spirit. But understand that they do not exist for a mission, but they exist for His glory. But they are in a mission because men, the beings that God created, fell into sin. But at the same time, God wanted to redeem His creation for us to be able to glorify God and worship Him. Now, as we talk about the Trinity is in perfect unity, that they have distinct roles but unified in mission, anong implication nito sa atin? Because we're talking about we're designed for relationships. As God, want, God wanted to initiate and build that relationship with us, in the same way, it has an implication to us. First implication is this. We are to pursue community and unity with other believ believers. So Jesus prayed that we are to be one, that His people are to be in unity, that we are to be united. In short, we are to be a community, we are to be a family of believers. And we have to understand this, that every time we worship and go to church, we are not just here to sing our, our favorite songs, we're not just here to listen to the Word of God. In fact, every time we hear... And ask your people, ask your church, how can we become better witnesses? And how can we apply your word in our lives? So as a church, we are a family of believers. 
So every time you come here, it's like a family reunion. Hey, I get to see the church again. I get to spend time with my brothers and sisters. And alam ko po na minsan nasa stress kayo every time, especially before. Remember you every after the service, please look at the person beside you and pray for that person. Iba na, alam niyo po, may nagsabi talaga sa akin, pastor, extrovert ka talaga. Because every time you say that, alam yung nasa stress ako, pastor. But I'm not going to apologize for that because we are a family. We are a family of believers. Because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then we are to grow alongside one another. Listen to this. We can't confess our devotion to Christ and be a, devote, be, and be a divided community. We just can't say, Lord, I believe in you, I love you, and, but I don't like the person beside me. If Jesus commanded us to love our enemies, imagine the instruction that He's giving us on how to love the person beside us. That person is your neighbor. And we are commanded to love our neighbors. So our devotion to Jesus leads us to build with other believers, and we can only build unity when we operate in love and humility. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul writes there that we need to have the, the same attitude of Christ, being a servant, being humble, being so selfless that Jesus, even to the point of the cross, He sacrificed Himself. In John chapter 13, Jesus says, the world will know that you are my disciples by your love. The world will not know that you are Christ's disciples when you raise up your hands during singing of songs, but the world will know that you're a disciple of Christ by your love. Many times, we would equate loving God by going to church and lifting up our hands in worship. But if you look at the Bible, loving God is always translated into loving people. Yet, a lot of times, we would water it down and simply say, Lord, I love you so much. Then God tells you, Sige nga, kung love mo ako, mahalin mo yung taong katabi mo. Lord, wag na lang. To love God, it is to love the people that God has entrusted to us. Yes, including those who have betrayed you, including those who have caused you pain and hurt. Nasakta na ba kayo? Napaasa na ba kayo? You see, in life, there will be people who will take advantage of us, but we can always choose to respond in grace and in love. These two, love and humility, are essential in being in unity with other believers. But what stops and hinders us? Preferences, hurt and trauma, comfort and convenience, and yes, a lot of times, apathy. Walang gud ko labot pastor. But you see, what will help us pursue unity with others is when the love of Jesus controls us. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Christ died for all. In the same way, we have, re been, we have been recipients of this love. Therefore, Christ's love controls us. It compels us to love others as well. You see, unity is crucial in God's kingdom, and that's the first thing that the enemy will try to destroy. And what's interesting is that a lot of Christians have embraced lies, like when they go to church and they would say, no one cares for me. No one loves me. And when the moment they entertain these lies, it creates this disunity in their hearts. But we have to understand that the source of our love is the love of God for us. Therefore, we can be in unity with others. Psalm 133 verses 1 Verse 1, it says here, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. God says that it is good. Unity looks good on us. And if you look at the, for the, the, the rest of the psalm, it says there that anointing and blessing comes from a position of unity. So that's the first implica implication. We are to build, we are to pursue community and unity with other believers. Secondly, we have a place to serve in God's kingdom. 
Just as the Trinity have they, they have distinct roles, they're equal in value. They are equal um, in, 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 in their places. We have to understand that we are also unique. We are different, and our differences make us unique. Can you, can you imagine if lahat tayo preacher? Sino makikinig? <laughs> can you imagine if lahat tayo worship leader? Difference and our differences make us valuable in God's kingdom. Romans chapter 12, verse 6, it says there that having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Tingnan mo katabi mo, kabang gifted yung taong katabi mo? Pwede mo bang makonvince yung taong katabi mo? Sabihin mo lang, alam mo, gifted ka. And you see, whatever gifts that God has given us, the Bible says, let us use them. And you know, one of the greatest blessings in my life, can I be honest with you? Isa po ako sa mga pinakasabog na taong makikilala ninyo. I love being with people, but you can never entrust me with organizing things and events because I'm not highly administered. gifted in it, but because of the presence of gifted people in my life. For the church to be built up, it takes the whole church to serve. You see, every time I go to a particular place, I don't see details. But there are people who would approach me, Pastor, I think we can do this. I think it's better if we do it this way. Parang, oh nga, no? Because I don't see details that way. I see bigger picture. That's why we need to serve together. And whatever gift that God has given us, listen to me, let us use them. Let us use them. Amen? And third implication is this. We're called to a common mission. When you talk about the word common, it means to sh it's shared by and someone said that what brings people together is either a common enemy or a common vision. You see, we have a common enemy. It's the devil. And the devil is somehow successfully influencing and destroying lives. That's why as a church, we have to come together and what? We need to advance God's kingdom. We are to make this. There is a vision that God has entrusted to us, which is to honor God and make disciples. We're not here to just do just any activity. Yes, there are times we will do feeding and all. There are times that we have to visit the, the prison cells. But as a church, we are to steward the call of God to disciple the next generation. And it is very important that for us to understand that we're called to a common mission. When you talk about a mission, it is an important assignment, a vocation, a calling of a person or an organization. You see, the Holy Trinity, the God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they're three distinct persons but one God. They have one mission, it's to bring salvation to people. God the Father sent His Son. The Son was the Redeemer who came to be crucified. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to proclaim the good news of salvation to everyone. And as the Trinity have their roles in saving mankind, we have to understand that we are to participate in God's kingdom purpose. And so we have a role to play. You have a unique gifting that you could offer. But my prayer is that we would respond 
to the call of God in our lives. You see, this church, the church exists for God's mission. God is raising up His church for His mission, for His people to know His purposes, for people to get into the saving knowledge of God and to be restored in a relationship with Him. It is our responsibility. We are never called to live a life that's comfortable. We are called to live a life that's faithful to the call and to the purpose of God. So church, We've been repeating over and over again that we are designed for relationships. So understand today that it is God who adds you into a church community. Not just for you to attend on a Sunday, but for us to do life and mission together. So we have to understand this. That we have to outgrow the idea that I'll simply show up on a Sunday. But every single day of our lives, from Monday to Sundays, 24-7, we are the church. And as God's church, we are to exemplify what it means to be in a relationship with Him. And as I, I want to share with you this one important point, that God grows us alongside a community to exemplify love and un unity. So when you talk about growing in your faith in the Lord, it's not growing independently. Yes, there's a time where you read your Bible alone, where you worship God alone. But God designed us to be together. So God grows us in faith, in maturity, in our passion, in our serving the Lord. God grows us alongside a community. The person seated next to you, the people in your row, every one of us, God grows us. And just before we celebrate communion and before I pray, here's what I would want us to do. I want you to just sit, roam around for a while and probably just tell three people, just tell three people, let's do life and mission together. Can we do that? Go ahead and, and just talk to people. Tell the person beside you, let's do life and mission together. Go ahead, come on, come on. Tell the person, let's do life and mission together. Now, all my life, I've been in church. You know, in a way, I grew up in church. My dad is a pastor, and he's still pastoring at, ch at church. But the reason why I never saw church as boring, because I did not just show up on a Sunday. You see, we are the church. And you will only say the church is boring if you've never served God's purpose in your life. I know life has been busy, life has been difficult, but don't let it stop you from fulfilling God's purpose in life. It, because at the end of our lifetime, the only relationship that will remain is your relationship with God. And the question I want to ask is this, how are you pursuing your relationship with God? How are you investing and growing in your relationship with God? At the same time, how are you growing in this God-glorifying, life-giving relationships around you? I pray that you would incline yourself today. For some people, you're still struggling with the idea, Lord, nasaktan ako sa church. And if it was your pastor who have caused hurt in your life, in behalf of all the pastors that have caused pain in your life, I would like to say sorry. I would like to ask for forgiveness if you have been hurt by your spiritual leaders, if you have been abused in the past, if you had, if you, if trust was broken in behalf of your spiritual leaders, 
I would like to ask for forgiveness. In the same way, I pray that you would continue to choose to grow in God's love and that you would choose to serve God's purpose for your life. Because at the end of the day, you are responsible in growing your relationship with Him. Yes, we are designed for relationships, but more importantly, you are designed and created to grow in your relationship with God. So if there's anything that hinders you, that stops you from fully enjoying that relationship with God, I pray that you would surrender it to the feet of Jesus today. Let's just pray. Lord, we come to you in humility. Lord, we come to you in brokenness. Lord, if there's anything, God, Lord, that's broken in our hearts, in our lives, things, Lord, that we have hidden deep inside our lives and no one knows, God, or maybe no one can see that because we did not allow people Lord, to speak to us because we have been hurt in the past. We built walls. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would broke, that you would break down walls right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, if there are cultural walls that we have placed, if we have, if there's this bitterness, if there's unforgiveness in our hearts, if there's just like preferences or yung comfort namin because of our personality, we pray, Lord, that you would break down these walls right now. And I pray, Lord, that even as you've called us to love our neighbors, to love our enemies, I pray first and foremost that we would experience your love in our lives today. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fill every heart right now with your love. Lord, that you would heal our brokenness, that you would fill our hearts right now with your love. Can we just do this? Can you put your right hand over your hearts? Lagay po natin mga kamay natin sa puso natin. Lord, we offer to you our hearts. Heal our hearts right now. Lord, we speak a miracle, God, right now. And I pray, God, for our hearts to be healed, to be restored, to be whole right now in the name of Jesus. I just feel like there are some of us that God is calling us to forgive someone right now. Someone who has mistreated you, someone who, who said things to you, people who maybe abused you or took advantage of you. I pray but by the grace of God, that there will be a miracle that it will take place in our hearts. Lord, teach us to forgive right now. And I want us to do this. I want you to take the time to just say, Lord, I forgive this person right now. Come on, just close your eyes. Be an attitude of prayer. And come to God and say, Lord, I forgive this person in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, because healing and restoration and reconciliation is possible. Lord, as you have forgiven us, Lord, we are forgiving this person. Lord, our mom, our dad, our leader, Lord, our sibling, Lord, someone from our past, Lord, our spouse, Lord, our husband, our wife, Lord, we are forgiving completely in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we just worship the Lord right now? I just want us to sing this song. And after, after we sing this song, we will continue to celebrate communion. Amen. Let's just sing this song. Praise Lord. From throne to cross. From throne to cross, you came to die. A crown for thorns to bring you light. With every nail I feel your mind, you look upon me with delight. You look upon us. You look upon.
Lord, we are grateful for your love for us. Lord, there's nothing in this world that can ever separate us from your love. So Lord, remind us every single moment, every single day, Lord, that we are loved by you, by our Father in heaven. Lord, remind us, God, that because of your love, you gave your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. So, Lord, today we come to you in humility. Lord, continue to teach us, Lord, how to love, how it is to love even, Lord, the most difficult people in our lives. Lord, you have given us these opportunities to grow in love and to demonstrate selfless love, God, into this world that's broken and thirsty, Lord, for your love. So let our love, God, be so evident and so real. And today, God, even as we will celebrate communion, remind us that more than 2,000 years ago, you demonstrated this amazing love for each and every one of us. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, that, he, that even as you have sacrificed yourself for each and every one of us, Lord, you have brought restoration and wholeness into our lives. So, Lord, in you, we are complete. And, Lord, in you, God, we are being sanctified more and more, God, into growing, into becoming like you. So, Lord, help us. And thank you, God, for the sacrifice you have displayed on the cross. Lord, we honor you. Let's partake of the bread together. In the same way, also, he took the cup. After supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, thank you. Lord, because of the shedding of your blood, God, we have received forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for cleansing us. Thank you, Lord, because in you there is now no condemnation. Lord, we have been set free. And Lord, by faith, we receive this gift of forgiveness that you have given to each and every one of us. So I even pray, Lord, that Lord, for those of us, Lord, who's Lord, struggling with shame, with condemnation, we pray, God, that you would just break those, Lord, that you would break those things in our lives, that you would set us free, God, from those patterns of sin in our lives. In the same way, God, Lord, to those who are praying for healing, upon their physical bodies. Lord, your word says that by your stripes we are healed. And so, Lord, we declare healing upon those bodies who are sick right now and in need of healing. Lord, whether it's here, God, in our physical location or to those who are watching online, I pray for healing to come upon us because you have purchased, Lord, our healing. You have purchased, Father, our breakthrough. So, Lord, we honor you in Jesus' name. Let's partake of the cup together. Let's just pray, Lord, thank you that we get to worship you as one. Thank you, Lord, for this church community. 
And thank you, God, that we get to grow in this relationship. Lord, we honor you and be glorified. Can we all lift up our hands before the Lord? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Lord, we honor you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everyone sing, amen and amen, amen. Before you go, why don't you greet five people, give them a high five, a fist bump. God bless you all. Have a great Sunday. Security. This world has no more control. I'm renewed and I'm restored. I've got no reservations as you take me higher. My life is elevated because you make me move. And I'm rising up with you. Rising up with you. Rising up with you. Rising up with you. You take me high on the wings of your truth. Yes, I'm rising up with you. up with